Hello and welcome. So this week I thought I would do something a little bit different uh, compared to all the pickup videos and things. You guys hopefully have realised or noticed that I have quite a fondness for the retro music in the retro games. I think as equally as the gameplay and the graphics and the box art and all that good stuff. The music is of equal value. It's, you know, nostalgic all by in itself. And uh, just listening to the tunes brings back great memories from our childhoods or recent times even. So it got me thinking that it would be a fun little video to go back and put together my favourite retro game music that I've uh, rediscovered upon creating all these videos. Hopefully you guys will have noticed or picked up on the ones I use all the time. It's kind of, uh, yeah. <laughs> probably a little bit obvious which ones are going to make this list but hopefully some of them will surprise you and also give those happy feelings as much as they do to me. To begin the video though I think uh, it might be worthwhile going over some notable mentions that uh, didn't quite make the list so let's begin. <laughs> F-Zero X on the N64 has got this awesome rock inspired soundtrack. Each of the tracks have got this awesome rock music. I particularly like this intro song. I think it's great. Uh, it does really represent how absolutely crazy of a racing game this is. Worthwhile. Definitely worthwhile checking out. I know the, the, the clip doesn't match the video, I just had both already at hand, but Banjo-Kazooie on the N64 was another rare classic and they really knocked it out of the park with the soundtrack in here. The music is from Treasure Trove Cove, which is a great level in the game, and yeah there's so many awesome soundtracks to this. The intro song itself is awesome, Gruntilda's Lair, so many amazing songs, definitely worth checking out. can't help but just hum along to the Super Mario Land basic, basic tunes. It's incredible to think that, you know, there's so many really, you know, interesting and catchy songs that came out from the Game Boy. And Super Mario Land is full of them. It's awesome. Thought this video was going to be dominated by Nintendo, right? Well, it mostly is to be fair, but uh, who can forget Sonic the Hedgehog on the Mega Drive? Green Hill Zone. How does this take you back? Probably the, one of the most played levels on our Mega Drive. Done this so many times, but uh, it is memorable and quality. The, the Mega Drive sounded a little bit different. I don't know. There's a different technology that they employed, but it definitely had its own unique sound, and Sonic nails it. Maybe taking inspiration from another underwater level, which uh, will most likely be appearing on this video, is Dire Dire Docks on Super Mario 64. What I like about this song is it's extremely cooling and soothing. It's quite relaxing. They managed to capture the feeling of just relaxing and swimming around. Although Mario's having a hard time of it in the clip. <laughs> Uh, yeah, great bit of music and it's suited the tone really well. Um, extremely memorable for me. Speaking of extremely calming and soothing music, that's right, Ocarina of Time didn't even make the top 15. Can you believe it? You can leave your outraged comments <laughs> down below if you want to. 
just a special shout out to the intro music to Ocarina of Time that really captured you know the serenity and the calmness of Zelda I guess Link riding around Epona in Hyrule Field at dawn it's a great bit of uh, gaming history and a gaming moment that is probably no doubt loved by many so it deserves a notable mention I think on this list Alright, let's get this show on the road, shall we? Starting with number 15. Probably one of the hardest levels on Mario 64, if not in the entire franchise. The Rainbow Road on Mario Kart 64. It's an absolute visual masterpiece. I mean, there's, no, there's nothing else really like Rainbow Road on Mario Kart uh, <laughs> with its open sides and I think it was the longest track in the whole game. Crazy zany visuals and uh, just the way the whole level plays out compared to the rest of it. Maybe Banshee Boardwalk a little bit harder actually. There's some really tough bits on there but either way Rainbow Road on the N64. It's got to be absolutely iconic. Uh, again the sense of wonder and good times playing, you know, Rainbow Road with your, with your siblings and friends. It's definitely a moment to, to cherish, I guess. It's a great bit of music and a great bit of gaming. This video is something else, right? I was laughing my ass off when I saw this clip, like what the hell is going on? Video Pug, shout out to you, you absolutely smashed it. Yes, that's right, it is Super Castlevania 4 on the SNES. Belmont's, Simon Belmont's theme even. A bit of a uh, confession, I haven't fully played this game. I've obviously started it a few times, gave it a bit of a whirl. I haven't really played it in earnest yet, but it is on the list. It's on the list of games that I really want to play and complete. Everybody rants and raves about how great Castlevania is, and the Super Castlevania has been one of the best entrants. But I, I really like this uh, bit of music that goes along with it. It properly captures the, uh, you know, the theme and the overall feeling of the game. Gothic with Dracula and the bad guys. This uh, pug is the icing on the cake. Hopefully you guys have had a good laugh at it just as much as I have. But uh, yeah, thoroughly enjoy Simon Bellman's theme on Castlevania. Awesome stuff. Fairly repetitive, I know, but Street Fighter 2 Vegas theme on the Super Nintendo. I think it's iconic, really. Hopefully you guys, everybody's probably played it by now. You guys should know that I'm a fan, judging by the intro. It's a great piece of music. The level design was awesome. Vega's an awesome bad guy. Hopefully you guys have seen the animated movie, where he takes on Chun-Li. It's an awesome bit of animation, and yeah, it's just absolutely awesome. I love it. This is going to surprise some people I know. The Super Mario World 1 1 theme from the SNES. And this is as iconic as it gets, right? Everybody loves Super Mario World, it's always on everybody's top 10s. Quality piece of music, it's catchy as hell, so memorable. Uh, but yeah, there's just other songs I think which do it better for me. Needless to say, it is an awesome piece of music and you can't help but hum along and remember the good times we listened to it, right?
Again, an absolute banger. This is the prologue theme music to Super Metroid on the SNES. And they did an awesome job of capturing a space sci-fi horror kind of vibe. It's extremely menacing and almost scary, uh, while also capturing that little bit of adventureness and bravery and you know action which obviously goes hand in hand with the Metroid series. They really did do a quality job on this and even though I haven't completed Super Metroid, uh, this is one that I have started many times and I've got pretty far. It's on the list to finish, but uh, yeah, absolutely this song. The other Brinstar song is awesome as well. Definitely worth checking out. Short clip, so I'll let you savour it. Enjoy. You knew this was coming, right? I mean, what sort of retro game music list? if I didn't have the original Tetris on the Game Boy. Wow. Again, just like Super Mario Land, extremely simplistic in nature, but do you know what I mean? It's got to be one of the most recognized and enjoyed, you know, bits of gaming music that's ever been composed. Probably a little bit higher up the list than many of you may have thought. It is extremely catchy and memorable and nostalgic for me. We had, this was our first game on the Game Boy when we were little. Uh, everybody remembers it. Hopefully you guys have seen the movie. They use it in various remixes and covers and things and they do a really good job. Uh, it's fantastic and I'm sure everybody will agree with me on that. I have no idea how they did it, but somehow in the early 90s, these guys created an absolute banger of a dance soundtrack. So many of the songs from Streets of Rage number 2 in particular are absolute bangers. This is stage 1-1, one, one, and obviously everybody straight plays Street Fighter 2 by now. Classic beat em up. I think it's better than most of the beat em ups of the era, to be fair, so. Mega Drive Sega, they managed to come good on this. Beat Nintendo in my opinion. Um, me and my brother, we had this. Hugely nostalgic for it. And yeah, the music in this game, you guys will recognize it gets featured in my vids loads. I absolutely love it. And if you guys haven't already listened to it, you should definitely check it out. If you don't recognize Alley Cat Blues from my video, seriously, where the hell have you been? J jokes. Anyway, yeah, hopefully you'll recognize this as some one of the songs that I use all the time. I absolutely love the energy in this. It's showing it's so much fun. TMNT from the 90s. Obviously this is the game music and wasn't used in the TV show but I think they absolutely nailed the feeling of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles as being this awesome quality, you know, cartoony, ninja fighting, badass teenagers. There's so much fun. There's so many good songs from this game in general. It's an awesome soundtrack. It's a shame the game's so expensive now. You know, just to try and track down and play an original copy is obviously going to set you back quite a bit, but do you know what I mean? If you uh, manage to find a copy of the game in other ways, I strongly suggest playing it. It's a co-op game, you can play with somebody else and beat them up. Uh, yeah, I just highly recommend it. Definitely worth checking out and worth listening to. I don't think I need to give a bit of an introduction to this. You should know what it is by now. I have, however, done a little bit of a mix. Hopefully you enjoy what I've done.
in all seriousness, is the merch that really captures you know, the sense of adventure, going out, capturing your Pokemon, training them up, trading them with your mates, battling them with your friends, taking on the final four. It's something special, right? And uh, they, they captured that in the music, I think. It's iconic and it's, you know, still so, so popular today. For good reason, I reckon. Uh, Pokemon really is magic and I'm glad everybody's enjoying it as much as I was back in the 90s. It's awesome. Tell me you don't think there's something incredibly catchy and memorable about the Donkey Kong Country intro music. I think this is incredible. <laughs> the intro music to Donkey Kong Country is amazing. It sounds like there's a full percussion orchestra there, but obviously there isn't. I'm not sure exactly how they did it, but normally with the graphics in Donkey Kong Country, the music is absolutely insane. It sounds so, so good. Do you know what I mean? You wouldn't bat an eyelid if they put this tune in a modern Switch game. Do you know what I mean? It just sounds amazing. And I think it stands up to the test of time. Uh, I really do. Rare created absolute gold in the 90s with Donkey Kong Country. It's a shame what happened to the company being bought up by the, uh, the evil Microsoft <laughs> Corporation. But uh, they still left us with this absolute gem of a game and I'm sure you can expect this isn't the last time you'll be hearing Donkey Kong on this list. Round one, fight! Hopefully you guys expected to hear this coming soon. Besides the intro music for Street Fighter 2, which obviously is my intro music for the video, uh, Guile's soundtrack I think is the best piece of music in Street Fighter 2. I already had, obviously, Vegas theme song, Ryu's theme song is also great, E Honda's, I mean there's so many good theme songs, but I think Guile's theme tune is the best overall. It captures everything which is just perfect about Street Fighter 2 and the 90s. How many hours have you spent playing this game, do you know what I mean, with your boys? Uh, it's, it's absolutely awesome. And yeah, they did a good job. I'm pretty sure they probably still use covers of this song now, and for good reason. It's just amazing. Number three is a little bit special. I'm going to utilize this uh, kind of viral parody video that went around earlier that uh, perfectly sums up the point, really, of how amazing this bit of game music is. Hey, just wanted to see how that pause music was coming along. Now keep in mind, this is a movie tie-in video game from the Nintendo 64. Not looking for anything too crazy. What do you think about this? Hilarious, right? These guys absolutely, well, this guy absolutely smashed it. A brilliant video. I mean... <laughs> Proper headbanging for the 90s. In all seriously though, in all seriously, in all seriousness, you know you've absolutely smashed it when your pause music is one of the most well-known bits of gaming music amongst retro gamers. <laughs> Again, Rare absolutely knocked it out of the park with this. They were on a roll in the 90s, I think everybody can agree. Goldeneye itself, you know, it was an absolute masterpiece. You saw my N64, or top N64 game, you game list, you would have seen that I put this at number one. There's so many iconic bits of music from that game. That absolutely hits But hard. also from the awesome and movie as well. I mean, it just brings back all I the strong memories. Only from the Going game. back and giving a play if you haven't recently, it's on Switch Online, there's no reason to.
you should have known this was coming. Aquatic ambience on Donkey Kong Country. Was this the second level in the game? I think it was. Again, you can see trend here, right? This is probably the second time this game's been on the list now. Uh, a few times rare have been on here. I think this is one of the best pieces of gaming music ever made. Uh, absolutely smashed it here. Underwater, you get that sensation of floatiness, serenity, relaxation. Do you know what I mean? Even if you, you know, you're not in a gaming mood, just put this on on a Sunday afternoon and just chill. Uh, it's just one of those bits of music. Timeless, I think. How they managed to get the SNES to sound this good, I think, you know, <laughs> deserves an Oscar really for for the work really. It's, do you know what I mean? It's amazing and strongly, strongly deserved of the second spot on this list, which does make you think, well, this song gets used in most of my videos. What the hell is number one? What did you guys reckon would be number one? I don't know. Let me know. actually harder than you might think for me to have ranked all these you can probably imagine I went round and round and moving various titles left and right taking some into the notable mentions and putting others from notable mentions into the list but for me when I think you know retro gaming I think Super Nintendo and when I think Super Nintendo I think of Link to the Past I think this is Pinnacle Zelda I think it's Pinnacle 16-bit and I think it's pinnacle retro gaming for so many different reasons. And Hyrule Field in A Link to the Past, I think, is an absolute masterpiece. There's a reason why this piece of music gets used in, you know, games today. You know, if you play the new Zelda games, Breath of the Wild or Tears of the Kingdom of Shore, you know, you'll recognize the music uh, just as well as the old timers from the original Zelda games or from Ocarina of Time. It's there in some form and whether it's the original versions, you know, back in the retro days or if you listen to orchestral versions, they're all so, so good, right? I think it's amazing piece of music and it definitely will stand the test of time. And for me, it is number one. So. What do you guys think? Why don't you uh, hit me up in the comments if you disagree? Have I missed some gems? Let me know.